NYU. China records its first novel coronavirus fatality in Beijing as death toll passes 100. Malacanang admits the repatriation of Filipinos in the center of the coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan City would be difficult to do. Immigration officials suspend visa upon arrival for Chinese nationals amid novel coronavirus alarm. Employers of slain overseas Filipino worker in Kuwait, Jinilin Villavende, charged with murder. And investigators reveal the final moments of Kobe Bryant's helicopter before it crashed in California on Sunday. Good evening. The death toll from the new coronavirus now stands at 106 as cases of new infections have almost doubled in a day. Travel restrictions have been tightened and wearing masks in public is now mandatory in some cities. Here's Mirasol Abugadil to tell us why. The new strain of coronavirus spreading across China claimed its first victim in Beijing, officials said on Tuesday as the death toll climbed to 106. The number of total cases confirmed by China rose to 4,515 as of January 27, up from 2,835 a day earlier. 30 provinces, autonomous regions, and municipalities across China reported 1,771 new confirmed cases, 515 new severe cases, and 26 new deaths including 24 in central China's Hubei, one in Beijing, and one in south China's Hainan province. Japan and South Korea is sending a plane to Wuhan to evacuate its citizens as efforts to repatriate foreign nationals from the city at the epicenter of the outbreak gather pace. The virus has spread across China and to at least 16 countries globally. Wuhan, as well as wider Hubei province, are already effectively in a lockdown with strict transport restrictions in and out of the area. Wearing masks in public is now mandatory in some Chinese cities. On Monday, authorities in Beijing confirmed a 50-year-old man had died, the first fatality in the Chinese capital from the virus. The coronavirus causes severe acute respiratory infection and there's no specific cure or vaccine. Most of the deaths have been in Hubei province, with the victims being elderly people or those with pre-existing respiratory problems. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Malacanang admits re repatriation of Filipinos in Yuan City, Hubei, China is difficult to do. But the Philippine government reiterates it is willing to bring the Filipinos based in Wuhan City back to the country. Rosalie Cos reports why. Due to travel restrictions and lockdown being implemented by China in Wuhan City, the ground zero or point of origin of the deadly 2019 novel coronavirus or NCOV, Malacanang admits repatriation of Filipinos there is difficult. China has prohibited the entry to and exit from the capital of central China's Hubei province. repatriation because merong Meron ding ang Chinese government, hindi nila pinapalis yung mga tao doon eh, to contain. Meron na nga silang mga stopping certain flights. So even if challenge. we want to repatriate them, if there is a restriction on travel there, what can we do? The palace official adds the Philippine government must be circumspect in its decision about the issue to avoid the spread of the deadly novel coronavirus. But Secretary Panelo says if there are other ways, and if possible, the government is willing to bring the Filipinos based in Wuhan City back to the country. Bring them here, then we will bring them here. We'll have to do some protocols to make sure that if they have the disease, they will not spread them. Also, Malacanang will await the recommendation of the Department of Health and the World Health Organization on whether or not to cancel the visa upon arrival of foreigners entering the Philippines coming from countries with confirmed cases of the 2019 NCOV. This is the statement of the palace after the Bureau of Immigration temporarily suspended the visa upon arrival of Chinese nationals due to the widespread of the novel coronavirus. 
Over a dozen countries have confirmed cases. The USA, France, South Korea, Japan, Nepal, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore, Vietnam, Taiwan, Canada, Sri Lanka, and Germany. What I'm saying is, if the commissioner thinks that that particular policy endangers the safety of our people, then logically, it will apply to other countries that may have the same so, cease being spread. So, sir, right now, are you is the palace recommending that? No. We're waiting for the recommendation of the DOH and the World Health. Meanwhile, the palace discourages government officials to travel to China. Eh, kung pagpunta mo ron, you will opening yourself to the virus, eh, ba't ka papupunta ron? And those who are intending to go there should think about their own health safety. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. The Department of Foreign Affairs consulted with the Department of Health on the establishment of health protocols for the evacuation of Filipinos from cities in China affected by novel coronavirus or NCOV, specifically in Wuhan City, the epicenter of the outbreak. During the meeting, officials discussed potential measures to properly respond to health emergency prompted by the outbreak of NCOV in China and other countries. Likewise, Acting Foreign Affairs Secretary Eduardo Malaya raised the need to formulate further health advisories for Filipinos, including the OH hotlines in each Philippine Foreign Service post in China to which they can call. Meanwhile, Health Undersecretary Mirna Kabotahe advised Filipinos in virus-affected areas to exercise precaution by avoiding crowded places, using masks and gloves, as well as practicing proper hand washing and hygiene to reduce the risk of NCOV infection. The DFA said it is continuously reaching out to Filipinos in China through embassy and consulate officials. Meanwhile, the Provincial Health Office of Aklan assures there is no confirmed case of the 2019 novel coronavirus in the province. The patients discharged after testing negative for NCO and COV infection will be continuously monitored. Mon Hoxon will explain why. The three minors, all Chinese nationals, previously observed to show symptoms of novel coronavirus infection have been discharged from a hospital in Aklan. According to Aklan Provincial Health Officer 1, Dr. Cornelio Quachon, the attending doctor has permitted the three children to leave the hospital after recovering from fever, coughs, and cold. The health official also assures the three will be continuously monitored in case they get sick again. Is pwede naman po sila lumabas na, they can go to Boracay uh, kahit na wala pa yung official result but uh, sinasabihan namin sila na we will be continuously monitoring you even if you're in Boracay. Of the three, one is six years old who came from Wuhan City and acquired fever and cough while on vacation on Barakay Island. Two are siblings, an eight-year-old and a six-year-old who traveled from Shanghai, China with coughs and cold and were taking medicine to treat their sickness even before arriving in Kalibo. Eleven Chinese nationals had been confined in Kalibo due to suspected novel coronavirus infection. All have been discharged from the hospital. Test results show they tested negative from NCOV infection. Meanwhile, 150 passengers were expected to take a chartered flight last night, but only 125 showed up. 25 other Chinese nationals failed to arrive to take the flight back to their country. The Provincial Health Office has begun to conduct contact tracing to find out the whereabouts of those remaining Chinese nationals. Mon Hock Son, UNTV News and Rescue. The Philippine health authorities say the country still has zero case of the 2019 novel coronavirus. This, although more than 20 individuals are, are considered as patients under investigation. Meanwhile, the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases has a quarantine plan for Filipinos in China who want to be repatriated. Aiko Miguel tells us why. 
There are 24 patients under investigation or PUI being isolated in different health facilities in the country as of today. The health department says three of the first reported PUIs, all foreign nationals, have been discharged after laboratory test results on their samples show they are negative for the 2019 and COVID. We are informing the public that still there are no confirmed cases of the novel coronavirus 2019 and COVID in the country. Three have been discharged. First was the patient from Cebu who was diagnosed negative for NCOV 2019 and is asymptomatic. And then two other patients who have now no illness and the test showed that it was some other pathogen, some other virus. World Health Organization country representative Dr. Rabindra Abiya Singhe meanwhile clarifies people should not routinely wear a mask, especially those who are not exposed to people who are sick or not in health facilities with patients under investigation. Doing so could also cause alarm to the public since it is not yet advised in the Philippines to wear N95 mask. We are hearing some reports from China that people could transmit the disease during the incubation phase. This has not been confirmed by WHO. We are working with a global team of experts looking closely at the information, studying the epidemiology of the disease. Uh, right now, we cannot confirm these reports. Meanwhile, an interagency task force on emerging infectious diseases in the country has been activated. Based on the task force meeting this morning, all Filipinos in China, particularly in Hubei province, who will avail the voluntary repatriation, will have to undergo a 14-day period quarantine. But those who still wish to stay there will be monitored. We are planning to repatriate all those Filipinos who can. That's the order of the president. Let's bring home everyone and bring home everyone safely. The only condition now in this repatriation is that because of the interagency task force resolution, they will have to be quarantined, especially those repatriated from Wuhan and Hubei province. All the details of the plan will be disclosed to them. And uh, we are now uh, arranging one place where we can quarantine all of them for ease of uh, management rather than assigning them to different uh, facilities. The DOH is waiting for six laboratory or confirmatory test results from the Victorian Infectious Diseases Reference Laboratory in Australia that will show the findings and samples sent to the facility coming from suspected coronavirus cases in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Chinese nationals, especially those traveling in groups, cannot enter the Philippines as easily as before. But the Bureau of Immigration clarifies there is no order to ban the entry of Chinese in the country. Joe Anano tells us why. The Bureau of Immigration has suspended the issuance of visa upon arrival to Chinese nationals. The order takes effect immediately in a move to curb the spread of the 2019 novel coronavirus that has afflicted thousands in China and penetrated several other countries. The Immigration Bureau clarifies the suspension covers only groups of Chinese nationals and not an individual passport holder unless they show symptoms of the NCOV. The Bureau emphasizes there is no order to ban Chinese nationals from entering the Philippines. Nag-suspend po tayo ng issuance nito, hindi po ibig sabihin nito uh, na hindi na mapapasukin lahat ng Chinese nationals dito sa bansa. Ang goal po nito is just to slow down the arrivals of the Chinese tour groups. Calibo International Airport meanwhile has suspended all flights to and from Wuhan City. Based on the estimates of the Bureau of Immigration, the suspension of visa upon arrival will affect 5% of the total number of Chinese arrivals in the country. The agency still has not determined when the suspension will be lifted. The Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority, for its part, has placed the port of Subic on heightened alert. Seaports and airports within the Subic Bay Freeport Zone are covered by the heightened alert status. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. There has been a high demand for face masks here and there as the public want to protect themselves from the yet undetermined coronavirus. Would a surgical mask or an N95 mask be enough protection? Find that out as Dante Amento reports. The World Health Organization includes wearing protective gowns, gloves, 
and facial protection while handling animals and animal products. There is now a high demand for face masks in China after Chinese officials confirmed more than 4,400 cases of the Nobel coronavirus nationwide and more than 2,700 cases in Hubei, the province where Wuhan is located. The toll has reached 106 as of today. Wearing a mask is a practical and easy way to protect ourselves from bacteria, viruses, and other hazardous particulates. The most common masks accessible to consumers are surgical masks and N95 masks or respirators. The Philippines Department of Health recommends the use of N95 masks to avoid contracting viruses. Don't spread it. And if it, can't be, if it cannot be avoided, just put an N95 mask or a surgical mask. Uh, momentarily, this will help uh, prevent the uh, spread. The DOH chief explains an N95 mask provides better protection. It can filter particulates up to 300 nanometer or 0.3 micron in length. To date, there is no available study that can determine the exact size of the 2019 novel coronavirus. Based on a recent study by the Center for Disease Control and Protection, the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome or SARS coronavirus and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus are 80 to 100 nanometers or 0.08 micron to 0.1 micron in length. On the other hand, human coronavirus is 0.12 micron. However, an N95 mask removes 90% of all particles that are at least 0.3 microns in diameter. Ito kasi designed no, to protect or remove particles less than or smaller than uh, as small, small, as small as 0.3 micron. On the other hand, a surgical mask has fibers that are wider apart compared with those of an N95 mask. The health department clarifies a surgical mask can be worn in public or if there will be no close contact with a patient. A surgical mask may also be used in areas far from an area with a coronavirus outbreak. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angela Lagunzad left off. I'm Alex Baltazar and here are the headlines. Consumers may expect lower LPG price next month. The Philippines implements import ban on Poland's poultry products to maintain bird flu-free status. The Taal volcano's sulfur dioxide emission and number of volcanic earthquakes further dropped in the past 24 hours. Employers of slain OFW Janeline Villavende charged with murder. And NHA Builders earns the third semi-finals ticket after edging PITC Global Traders. Good evening. Restaurant owners may spend loss for their use of liquefied petroleum products come February. This comes after high-priced LPG last holiday season. Let's find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. Starting February 1st, the price of liquefied petroleum products may be rolled back by 4 to 6 pesos per kilogram. This means a 44 kilogram LPG cylinder will be 44 to 66 pesos less. A lawmaker explains the increase in the price of LPG at the beginning of the year was due to the holiday season. But LPG MA party list representative Arnel T confirms a rollback is anticipated next month. Definitely there will be a rollback. Based on the record of the Department of Energy, as of January 1, the price of household LPG in Metro Manila spiked by 7 pesos and 55 centavos per kilogram, resulting to a domestic price range of 677 pesos and 5 centavos to 828 pesos and 69 centavos for every 11 kilogram LPG cylinder. In the uh, past week of January, almost 10 pesos per kilo ang tinasi. So, so laki, 100 plus ang the impact of the increase affected the income of small business owners like this restaurant in Quezon City managed by Alwin Mariano. He says they consume 4 to 6 11 kilogram LPG cylinders. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City.
The Philippine government takes action on a fight against bird flu. Chicken and eggs that come from Poland will not be allowed entry to the country. Ray Palayo explains why. Poultry products imported from Poland are now prohibited to enter the Philippines. Based on a memorandum order of the Department of Agriculture on January 21st, the import ban includes domestic and wild birds including their eggs and semen. According to the Bureau of Animal Industry, Poland is experiencing a bird flu or avian influenza outbreak subtype H5N8. Gusto natin maintain natin na free tayo. So ang posible na paraan para makapasok yan, migratory birds or yung mga importation natin ng mga poultry coming from other countries. Kaya pag ganyan na may report na sa ibang bansa, stop na. In the Philippines, in 2017, a bird flu outbreak occurred in Central Luzon from April to September which affected poultry farms in that region. Thousands of chicken and other bird species were called to avoid the spread of the disease. Bureau of Animal Industry Director Ronnie Domingo clarifies the Philippines submitted a bird flu-free status to the World Organization for Animal Health in mid-2018 after the virus was eradicated. The official adds there are five countries recommended for import ban and Poland is the first to be approved by the Department of Agriculture. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Tal Volcano sulfur dioxide emission and number of volcanic earthquakes went down further in the past 24 hours. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, said in its 8 a.m. bulletin on Tuesday that the sulfur dioxide emission was below instrumental detection or too low to be detected. Sulfur dioxide is a major gas component of magma. More sulfur dioxide is released when magma is near the surface of a volcano. Meanwhile, there continues to be fewer volcanic earthquakes. Quakes are another indicator that magma is moving or rising toward the surface. As for activity at the main crater, FIVOX said this morning that it observed weak to voluminous emission of white to dirty white steam laden plumes 100 to 800 meters in the past 24 hours. Despite the Al's slow activity, FIVOX maintained that entry to Ta'al Volcano Island as well as areas over Ta'al Lake and communities west of the island within the 7 kilometer radius from the main crater must be strictly prohibited. Batangueños who have lost their livelihood may continue to earn some through a government program open today. Meanwhile, some parents displaced from Taal Volcano Island fear for the future of their children. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The Department of Labor and Employment began to implement its government internship program today. The government internship program, or GIP, aims to provide temporary livelihood to families who have no source of income to return to after the eruption of the Taal Volcano. The program's beneficiary includes 600 families from the town of Mataas, Nakahoy. Each beneficiary will work for 8 hours a day for a month and receive a wage of 400 pesos a day. That's equivalent to 12,000 pesos for a month of work. Meanwhile, some residents on the Taal Volcano Island, which remains on lockdown due to constant threats from the volcano itself, are worried about their livelihood. Kami po hindi magkakahanap buhay, hindi po magpapag-aaral ang aking mga anak. Dahil ako naman po ay nag-iisa lang po, hiwalay po ako sa atawa, tatlo po ang anak po. Yun nga lamang po, yung kanabukas na po na kami mga anak na para makapag-aral, hindi po sila nakakapagpasok ngayon. Meanwhile, the local government of Balete, Batangas is now in the process of procuring land for displaced families. So may phase 1 kami, so meron kami phase 2. Ang problema lang namin sa phase 2, eh, yung binili namin lupa, eh, pasok sa 14 kilometers radius. So yung uh, withdraw namin, maghahanap kami ng lupa na lagpas sa 14 kilometers radius. Mayor Wilson Maralit adds they plan to build a tent city on vacant plots near the housing program for families who have lost their homes. The Batangas provincial government has committed to buy or pay for the livestock of locals. Eh, ang kinabubuhay po ng aming uh, barangay ay ang pangingisda. Ay tutulungan po daw kami ng aming mayor na magkaroon ng pang panggamit sa pangingisda. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Batangas.
Apache Builders climbs another step in their campaign for championship in the League of Public Servants. Meanwhile, Agriculture Food Masters hope for a semi-finals ticket continues. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. Season 3rd Blazer NHA Builders qualifies in the semi-finals of UBEN TV Top Season 8. After demolishing PITC Global Traders through solid offense and defense, coached by ex-pro bowler Bennett Pallad, the Builders defeated the Global Traders in a 77-74 game. Kailangan namin mag-focus itong semis kasi medyo mahirap yung kalaban namin. So, bubuhos namin lahat para umabot kami sa finals. Big mistakes uh, on crucial times and sportsman like foul technical foul uh, yun ang nag-turn around ng game namin Meanwhile, Agriculture Food Masters prevented elimination by toppling the more experienced two-time champ Judy Sherry Magis in an exciting game in Paco Arena, Manila, 71-68. Despite the absence of key player Emerson Oreta, the nine Food Masters players gave their all to stop the Magis and dominated all quarters. Sherwin Silva was hailed as the best player of the game with 23 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3 steals. Henry Fernandez contributed 14 points. Nagsigla kami sa zone defense, yun talaga. Mahirap kasi kalaban din, malakas din sa loob yung uh, offense nila eh, kaya nag-zone kami. Medyo minalas yung mga players eh, bandang huli na lang kami na umahapol. Hindi pa namin na-convert yung last shot na 3 points para nag-double time. It's now a three-way tie with the Food Masters, Judiciary Magis, and PITC Global Traders all have a 6-5 win-loss record. There's only one semi-finals left. Which team will earn it? Find that out on February 2, Sunday in Paco Arena, Manila through another UNTV Cup Season 8 doubleheader. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Welcome back to Y News. Labor Secretary Sylvester Bellio III brings news that means justice for a slain Filipino worker in Kuwait is a step closer. The official is set to fly to Kuwait to meet with his counterpart in the Gulf state. Harleen Delgado details why. The employers of the slain overseas Filipino worker Ginaline Villavende have been charged with murder. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III announced this in the Senate hearing today on the welfare of migrant workers. According to the Secretary, the couple are now detained in a facility for high criminals. Reports say one of them is employed at the Kuwait Ministry of Interior. According to Presidential Spokesperson and Chief Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo, Malacanang will such development in the case. Meanwhile, the National Bureau of Investigation has released its autopsy report on Villa Vendas body. The NBI Medical Legal says the OFW suffered abuse and sexual violence for months before her death on December 28, 2019. There were uh, so many injuries found uh, at the back of the victim because this is a sort of submission. She cannot endure the pain, so she will just hide her face in order, in order not to involve her anterior part or the frontal part. Secretary Bellio is set to fly to Kuwait in February together with a technical working group to talk with their Kuwaiti counterparts and discuss the standard employment contract to ensure the welfare of OFWs in the Gulf state. Such contract is one of the country's demands to remove the total deployment ban of Filipino workers to Kuwait. The secretary says among the terms that Kuwait should agree with include specific working and sleeping hours and one day off with pay. Passports and cell phones of Filipino workers should not be confiscated by the employer. Secretary Bellio adds Filipino workers cannot be transferred to another employer without their consent and the labor attaché. Because I told them the ban will stay if general is not given justice and you will not agree to the harmonized standard deployment contract. 
The secretary is positive. The contract will be signed before President Rodrigo Duterte flies to Kuwait in March. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. And for the news abroad, here's Scott Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, Alex. U.S. President Donald Trump's lawyer stressed that the impeachment trial against the Republican president puts the U.S. constitutional framework in an unimaginable danger. Judith Agnofente reports. U.S. President Donald Trump's defense team said on Monday that the president acted under his constitutional authority, under his legal authority in our national interest and pursuant to his oath of office. Addressing senators during their second day of arguments, Jay Sekulow, one of Trump's lawyers, told the chamber that the current impeachment trial put the constitutional framework in unimaginable danger. If the bar of impeachment has now reached that level, then for the, the sake of the republic, the danger that puts not just this body, but our entire constitutional framework in is unimaginable. Trump's fellow Republicans in the U.S. Senate came under fresh pressure on Monday to allow witnesses and new documents in his impeachment trial, while Trump's defense team argued that policy differences were a crucial reason that Democrats have sought to remove him from office. A New York Times report that former National Security Advisor Jen Bolton has written in an unpublished book manuscript that Trump told him he wanted to free security aid to Ukraine until Keefe helped with politically beneficial investigations prompted fresh calls by Democrats for Bolton and other witnesses to testify at the trial. The issue of whether to call witnesses might be resolved in a Senate vote on Friday or Saturday. Democrats said the Bolton report made it all the more pressing for the Senate to call Bolton as a witness in what is only the third presidential impeachment trial in U.S. history. Madam Speaker, just on John Bolton quickly, would you, what's your reaction to the new, the new news? Time is before we should have witnesses, documents, and evidence in order to truly have a trial. Do you think we'll get that? Do you think Depends the Republicans... the courage of the senators. We'll see. Do you think the Republicans will vote for witnesses? No. I'm the last person to ask that. Judith Anafuente, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. At least 46 people died and thousands displayed as storm slash southeast Brazil. Meanwhile, the U.S. military has confirmed one of its planes crashed in eastern Afghanistan on Monday. Here's Victor Casare to tell us why. In Brazil, at least 46 people have died in Brazil and more than 25,000 have been displaced due to widespread flooding following storms and heavy rains that have swept across the southeast of the country. Most of the casualties were in the state of Minas Gerais, which had its heaviest rainfall over a 24-hour period. The lethal flooding comes exactly a year after the rain-triggered collapse of a tailings dam in the town of Brumadinho that killed more than 250 people in one of the world's worst mining disasters. In the USA, the U.S. military on Monday confirmed that a U.S. Air Force aircraft crashed in Afghanistan earlier in the day. David Goldfin, chief of staff of the U.S. Air Force, reportedly said that an Air Force E-11A Battlefield Airborne Communications Node aircraft went down in territory currently under the Taliban control in Afghanistan while attending an event hosted by the Center for a New American Security, a Washington-based think tank. William Leggett, a spokesman for the U.S. military in Afghanistan, also confirmed the incident, saying the cause of the crash is under investigation. It is unclear how many people were on board. The Afghan Taliban claimed Monday that its fighter shot down a U.S. Air Force's aircraft in eastern Ghazni province. And in the United Kingdom, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said on Monday he would make a decision on Huawei's role in 5G networks that would give consumers and businesses the benefits of the new technology without compromising national security. Johnson is due on Tuesday to decide what role China's Huawei will play in 5G telecoms networks but has faced intense pressure from President Donald Trump's administration to block the Chinese company which the United States fears could compromise British secrets. When asked about Huawei on Monday, he said there was a way to allow consumers and businesses access to the new technology without compromising security 
security relationships with the US-led Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. The way forward for us clearly is to have a, uh, a system that delivers for people in this country the kind of consumer benefits that they want uh, through 5G technology or, or whatever, but does not in any way compromise uh, our critical national infrastructure, our security, or uh, jeopardize our ability to work together with other intelligence uh, powers around the world. Huawei, the world's biggest producer of telecoms equipment, denies it is a vehicle for Chinese intelligence and says the United States wants to ban it because no U.S. company can offer the same range of 5G technology at a competitive price. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Kath Dumara. I was reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. U.S. investigators are working to determine the causes of the helicopter crash that killed basketball star Kobe Bryant in California on Sunday. All nine people on board the helicopter died, including Bryant's 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. Monoxon reports. The National Transportation Board called on Monday for the public to give it any photographs or video that might have been taken of the weather in the area of the helicopter wreck that killed basketball star Kobe Bryant. According to NTSB board member Jennifer Homendi, debris was spread out over about 150 meters with the tail and the main rotor having separated from the fuselage, calling it a devastating accident scene. Air traffic controller recordings showed that pilot was flying too low to be monitored in fog. The pilot requested flight following to continue to Camarillo, but Southern California TRACON advised the pilot that they were too low for flight following. Approximately four minutes later, the pilot advised they were climbing to avoid a cloud layer. When ATC asked what the pilot planned to do, there was no reply. Radar data indicates the helicopter climbed to 2,300 feet and then began a left descending turn. Last radar contact was around 9.45 a.m. and is consistent with the accident location. Coroner's investigators said on Monday they had recovered three bodies from the crash site and were searching for more remains. The Sikorsky S-76 chopper slammed into a steep hillside on outside Calabasas, California, 65 kilometers northwest of downtown Los Angeles, killing all nine people on board, igniting a brush fire and spreading debris over hundreds of feet of grassy terrain. The NTSB offered no update on the search for victims but said investigators were expected to be on the scene for as many as five days. Meanwhile, mourners gathered at Kobe Bryant's Mamba Sports Academy in Thousand Oaks, California on Monday, not far from where the basketball star was killed in a helicopter crash. On Monday, mourners had created a makeshift memorial at the Mamba Academy where they gathered to pay homage to the basketball great. Kobe inspired me and my brother to play basketball, to go on to high school, play high school basketball. I played all my life since first grade it just he was the guy he was my icon my role model who got me into the sport who got me playing the national basketball association canceled a game scheduled for staples center on tuesday between the lakers and their crosstown rivals the clippers the decision the nba said in a statement was made out of respect for the lakers organization which is deeply grieving the tragic loss of Lakers legend Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven other people in a helicopter crash on Sunday. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. Nine more previously coronavirus-infected pneumonia patients have been discharged from the hospital across China as scientists are frantically working on concussions to stop the spread of a newly emerging virus. Details in this report. A patient previously diagnosed with the novel coronavirus pneumonia was discharged from the hospital in Jingzhou city of central China's Hubei province, marking the first cured patient in the city. 
The cured patient, Wang, 46, used to work in Wanan Seafood Market in Wuhan City. He developed symptoms including fever, headache, and lacking in strength and was transferred to the isolation ward of Jingzhou Chest Hospital on January 7. After the treatment, Wang's condition improved significantly and his body temperature got back to normal. He showed the negative results in the two continuous nucleic acid tests of the novel coronavirus. The patient meets the discharge standards for both the national and provincial level. Today, January 27th, the first cured patient of novel coronavirus pneumonia in Jingzhou City has been cured and been released. Three patients with novel coronavirus pneumonia were discharged from hospital in Hubei province on Monday, according to the Provincial Health Commission. In Shenzhen City, south of China's Guangdong province, another two patients diagnosed with the novel coronavirus pneumonia were cured and discharged from the hospital. The other four patients released from the hospitals, including a couple in Shanghai and two in East China's Jiangxi province. According to the NHC, a total of 60 cases of novel coronavirus pneumonia have been cured across the country. Meanwhile, China has started to develop a vaccine for the novel coronavirus or 2019 NCoV after successfully isolating the first strain of the virus. On the evening of January 7, the CDC successfully isolated the novel coronavirus from clinical specimen and on January 12, the virus was first isolated from the environmental specimen. Currently, the CDC has started developing vaccines against the novel coronavirus and also screening drugs targeting against the pneumonia caused by the virus. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Many issues are faced by different countries and they ne never seem to end. But now just sit back, relax and enjoy watching hilarious photos that made it to and won the Comedy Wildlife Photography Awards 2019. Nina Armelio reports. What are you looking at? Deer? What deer? Excuse me? One, two, three, I'm coming to find you. Open. Those are just some of the 40 hilarious animal photos taken in various wildlife areas in Holland, Japan, Austria, and other parts of the globe that made it to the finals of the Comedy Wildlife Photography Awards 2019. Among the winning entries are squirrel wishes taken in Sweden by Geert Wiggen, a spaceman-like Japanese snow monkey, a surfing Gentoo penguin South Atlantic style, a king penguin and an Antarctic fur seal chest bump, and other highly commended winners. Elaine Kruger's camera lenses witness a seeming wedding ceremony of a pair of Cape squirrels in Kalahari, South Africa. Her photos titled First Comes Love, Then Comes Marriage won the Amazing Internet Portfolio Award. Alaskan photographer Harry Walker won the Affinity Photo People's Choice Award and the Olympus Creatures Under the Water Award for a sea otter that gestured, Oh my! Two birds that appear to deal with a family disagreement that won the Spectrum Photo Creatures in the Air Award were captured by Croatian Vlado Pirza. And a photo of an African lion titled Grab Life by the Shot by British Sarah Skinner won the Alex Walker Syrian Creatures on the Land Award and was hailed the overall winner. Comedy Wildlife Photography was launched by Paul P.J. Johnson Hicks, a wildlife photographer, and Tom Sullen, a fellow award-winning photographer and one of the judges in the competition that aims to contribute to wildlife preservation. Sullen says the 2020 edition of the awards will open a few weeks from today. Nina Armilia, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this January 28, 2020. On behalf of Angela Lagunzad, I'm Alex Baltazar. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.